Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Now listen to him. I want to talk to you about something very, very serious. And I want I want you to understand the, the backside of this, the origin of this, and really so you can protect yourself going forward. And this can go both ways for men and women, but what we see mostly reported because when it's the other way around, men rarely report it because of the shame and not wanting to be look down upon or other men to say, oh, you know, a woman beat you up and things of that nature, because if a woman beats a man up, then it is insinuated that there's no man that he can beat up. And that may be a false assumption, but that's how it's looked at. But we, we just seen here in the media where an NBA player did a lot of damage to his girlfriend, which I saw another picture that had her in a WNBA jersey. And this NBA player is like, when I look at him as a man, there's certain, there's certain times, I believe all men kind of know men and we could read men. But when I look at him, I just see extreme, extreme pain. And there's no excuse for him putting his hands on a woman. But what I want you to understand as a woman is when you meet a man, if this man does not have somebody to talk to, meaning a life coach, a counselor, therapist, pastor, like somebody who has his ear, not somebody who talks to him. He can talk to like a homeboy or a friend who is like a yes man, but I mean someone who has his ear. Like, for me, my father is still living, and my father has my ear. If I talk to my father, he can get me all the way together. What he says to me, what he tells me to do, then I'm going to be about that. We're going to make it happen. And he has my ear. Outside of my father, no other person has my ear, you know, outside of my wife. So if it was something between me and my wife, there's really nobody else I'm going to listen to other than my father. And when God called my father home, then I'm going to have to get a therapist. And that way, anything I'm going through emotionally, I can put that there and have that conversation. And now, the thing with therapy, what I found being a coach for 15 years is that a lot of people come to me from therapy and they felt like they were just spinning their tires. They felt like they were just talking about the same thing over and over and over, but they didn't have real action plans like, hey, you know, let's let's write a book about this, this experience. Let's start a nonprofit organization. Let's go volunteer here and there like they felt like they were spinning their tires. And so, and then some people, when they first get in therapy for the first year or two, it is the greatest thing that has ever happened in their life. And then a lot of times people come to me after they've been in therapy for like 10 years. So I have clients, hey, Tony, I've been doing 10 years, 12 years. I think not, most I've heard is 25 years. And, but yet now they want to, push forward like they want to do something and not all therapists have a life coaching hat that they can put on and they, they are not a life coach so they stay within a certain type of treatment plan and it's pros and cons to both because a life coach doesn't have a treatment plan a life coach can come up with like an action plan but a life coach won't understand or be every single thing that a person may go through, nor will a life coach have a term for it or understanding of it or be able to diagnose it or prescribe medicine um, as certain levels of people in the clinical field can do. And so that is important. And it's, it's not necessarily what I found is not one is better than the other, but one is 100% required. And so my dad being a pastor and a life coach and a Christian counselor, 
and me not seeing him just as a father, but me respecting his voice as a professional, it is effective in my life. And it has saved my wife and I's marriage numerous times. So I know it to be real as a man. Now, before I was talking to my father and before I was open to that, which was before the age of 23, I was very toxic. And in a couple of relationships, it got really, just really wrong. And so I know for a fact, and one of the things that I know playing college football, you get to be on, you know, in this microcosm of manhood because in your locker room, you have a hundred plus other men. And we all grown from the age of 18 to 26 is in a college locker room. And then you have your coaches who some of them may be in their 20s and early 30s. And then, of course, you gonna have the older gentlemen as well, who sometimes still act like children. And so you're in this microcosm where you get to see what are men like, because now you're getting to see all different types of men, white men, black men, Hispanic men, we're not really Indian, you know, or Asian as much, but depending on your team. But a man is a man is what you quickly learn. A man is a man. And I remember in my locker room in college, we had a guy from Ohio who he gave us who was on that bench where we sat, he gave us a lesson on how how to abuse a woman without people finding out. And so he gave a lesson on how to, when you get mad with your woman and you want to put hands on her, to hit her in her ribs, to hit her in the rib cages and all of that, instead of in the eye and in the neck and in places that is in the public where people can see. So that was the lesson. And it was, I, I was mind blown. And that's something that a lot of times what I try to tell you, because I, I don't have a man law. I don't have a man code. I got a God code. And what, what I'm here to do is help men and help women based on the knowledge that's needed. Now, when you playing a game and you running game, then you upset with me when I expose your game. And so I got a God code that I have to live by and keep. And that is something where when Donald Trump said, you know, you can grab them by the P, you could grab a woman by the P. He wasn't lying. And when he said, you know, that's just locker room talk. I remember people like LeBron James and stuff coming out and they was capping. They coming out talking about what locker room has he been in? That's not locker room talk. And that absolutely 100% is locker room talk. And it get way worse than that in a locker room. But some men are so childish and so lame that they can't admit that we are childish and lame in them locker rooms and that we're not men in them locker rooms and that we grown boys in them locker rooms. Because when I worked in locker rooms as a professional, guys come in and they talking about the weed that they were smoking. They talking about the drugs that they were taking. And they talking about the threesome that they had last night. They talking about these different things. If they had to put hands, if they put hands on a woman, they talking about that with the person next to him, yeah, man, things got crazy, man. I had to choke her. I had to hem up. Man, hey, I feel you. I know how it be sometimes, boy. Hey, you better be glad she ain't called them boys, though. That is 100% locker room talk. So what you have to understand is this is a culture being created. And if you a man and you know that you are part of that culture or you perpetuating that cycle, you need to get your life together. You need to get your life together. You need to check yourself and you need to grow up and you need to be a real man. And if you're a woman watching this, you need to understand that this is putting hands on a woman is that's not uncommon. Like is like, when I think about the men that I know, for one, 100 percent of men are capable of it. 100 percent of men will not do it. But 100% of men are capable of putting hands on a woman, meaning that any man could be pushed to the point where 
or angry to the point that he put hands on a woman. That's any man from your two year old son to your 100 year old dad or granddad, any man. You know why? Because a man's brain lacks the cognitive skills that a woman's brain possesses, meaning we have cognitive skills, but they're not as developed. That part of our brain is not as developed or expanded like a woman's. So when a man it goes through extreme anger or stress, a man is more likely to use physical force than verbal articulation. And if you actually know men and study men, if you have a man, if you have a son, then you will find that what I'm saying is 100% very true. A man who learns how to be extremely frustrated, angry, mad, scared, fearful, and not use physicality is an evolved man. That is a man who has gone to another level of emotional intelligence and he is not normal. Meaning he, he is, that should be normal, but he is a rare man. This man is on another level. If you have a man like that, appreciate that and value that. Now do not think that he's not taking that out in pornography or in adultery or in fornication unless he is taking it out in prayer or meditation, quietness, stillness, exercise, hobbies, working, activity, some now so that is another level of manhood. But at the same time, when you look at women, women are as well the same way, but just at a slower rate, meaning a woman, when frustrated and angry enough, will become physical. But there's more women who can articulate themselves and not become physical than there are men. And then there are women who can be angry and instead of lashing out by cheating or stealing money from the man or setting the man up to be hurt or acting out in another way, there are women who will go and do classes and you know Pilates, the gym, dive deeper into their business, their brand. And so that again is an evolved woman. So what we have to understand is that the human mind is not very, it is capable of anything, but it has to be trained. It has to learn how to behave. So we have to create those brain patterns with us, by us knowing what the proper response, not reaction, the proper response to this incident, this action by us knowing that and then us carrying that out, we program our minds to handle things in a healthy way. But when you don't know, because all you have seen is it handled this way. So I guarantee you this young man, he either saw, his, saw or knows of his mom being beat or his sisters or just in general, that is what he has learned. This is what a man does when you are angry with a woman. And even if he hated the lesson when he learned it, it still became a lesson. And until he realizes that you have to walk away when you are angry, if you feel like putting hands on a woman for something that you're angry about whether it's something you feel she has done. Like one thing that'll send a man there really quickly is a, a woman dealing with another person sexually or, or e intimately or emotionally. That, that'll that send a man there pretty much faster than anything. The other thing is a man trying to control a woman and her not being controlled. So if a man is saying, hey, do this or do that, or you can't do this, you can't do that, and then he catches her doing that, 
that'll send a man there because when you try to control a human being, you lose control. And when a man loses control, he loses control of himself as well and he'll become physical. And the other thing is when a woman puts her hands on a man and it could be a woman finds something in his phone and she starts punching him and he, he then takes his anger out on her. So the covering up, you know, a bear hugging her or taking off, he'll then take his anger out on her. And that that is what we saw, what it appeared to be with Rihanna and Chris Brown. If y'all remember that, I believe it was he found, and also Evelyn Lozada and Chad Ochocinco Johnson. Both of those stories was a situation where the woman found the man cheating, like found something that implied he was cheating. Then the woman gets angry and starts to yell or curse or in Rihanna's situation, I, they were saying that she was hitting him. And then he then retaliated and started hitting her. And he 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 went all the way in. And then with the Ocho Cinco situation, he, I don't know if she leaned in or she was in his face or she, or she was, or he got in her face, but then he headbutted her. And he did it with force. And it probably was like this thing of like, who are you yelling at? Who are you jumping at? I'm the man in this situation. Boom. Headbutted her. She had a big gash in her head. They posted the pictures. The gash had to get stitches. And But in both of these celebrity incidents that we got to, you know, read about. And for me, I was the coach in that situation with. Evelyn Lozada and Ocho Cinco, and I could say that because they said it publicly. So Chad said it on an interview with Larry King that he came to work with me for a week. Evelyn said it in different articles, ChristianPost.com, and different articles that I was her life coach. And so that's public knowledge. And the headbutt's public knowledge, me being their coach is public knowledge. So that was a sit, but the situation was she found like a receipt for condoms or found condoms. And then got in his face. She, you know, she's a very, she's on Basketball Wives. You know, they flipping tables and throwing wine. They rambunctious and stuff like that already. So she's not this, you know, quiet, docile woman who's not going to speak her mind. And then when you're dealing with somebody, an athlete, they're not all the way, we, we're not all the way together either. <clears throat> so it's a recipe for a disaster. And this is what I want women to understand. Do not go into a relationship expecting that a man has a belief system that he cannot put hands on a woman. It's not that amount of men is like 20 to 30 percent that have that has been deeply ingrained in them that under no circumstances can they ever put hands on a woman. The other 70 to 80 percent have been taught that if a woman gets out of line, you can put hands on her. And they have been taught by their mom and their sisters. If a woman hits you first, then you can hit her back because she should not hit a man if she doesn't want to be hit like a man. So what you have to realize is that that's a very toxic lesson to teach a male because males are naturally stronger than females. So if you are a woman raising a son, do not teach him that lesson because his woman may very well hit him. And if he cocks back and hits her, he could literally kill her with one punch. That is just normal, natural strength of a man. If he catches her on the right part of her chin or the right part of her temple, she's dead. And you have to understand that. So... I will always tell my sons, don't ever, under no circumstances, put your hand on a woman. Under no circumstances. If she hit you, that means you need to leave her because she don't she don't have home training. Cut her off because if she keep hitting you, eventually she going to kill you. And so that's the lesson we need to teach. Violence is not a response. And I've lived through this in toxic, abusive relationships. So I... I'm speaking from experience. I'm not speaking from a place where I ain't never been in the fire and been in that type of situation. And this is the stance that I'm taking. 
It's never right. It's never the it's never the 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 choice, the option that needs to be made. So we need to know and understand that. And the the lesson needs to go out and we need to start raising these young men to escape the situations. You know, you angry, you that angry, you need to do a cool down technique, count backwards from 10, count backwards from 100, take seven deep breaths, inhale seven, hold it. If the woman is putting her hands on you, you need to cover up, you need to leave, you need to get out of there and you call the police on her as well. If she putting hands on you, she need to be sat down, she need to be arrested, she need to learn her lesson. Don't feel like that because you're a man that you can't call the police. Call the police in a heartbeat and because it's unacceptable. Because when the man put hands on the woman, the police getting called a lot of times. So, and, But also, the police not getting called a lot of times when a man put hands on a woman. If you are a woman and a man put hands on you, call the police. Because if you don't call the police and, you, and he going to keep putting hands on you, you're eventually going to be dead. So what you have to realize now it's different if you the man, you the woman, and you provoke this person. You went and you provoked them and you did something and, and you know you got them to that level. Then you wrong if you provoking somebody, then getting them to that level, then calling the police. You need to check yourself. You need to check yourself. You need to get your life together because one day they're going to get out of that jail cell. And, and the next time they put hands on you, it's going to be to end your life because they know how you get down. They know you calling the police, so they finna end you all the way. Do not play those kind of manipulative mind games thinking that you got the upper hand because you could call the police because you the woman or you the man or you the person that you know the police going to believe. You will lose your life. So listen to me. To any and every person, if you work in, if you work in sports, if you work with groups of men and women, you need to bring in speakers who can t tell a personal story about domestic violence and things of those, those natures. And for y'all athlete teams, for y'all coaches, if you the GA, talk to your head coach. You need to bring in people to talk to people. And this happened with men and women because I believe it was the WNBA players like Brittany Griner or maybe somebody else that these women is beating on their girlfriends. They done got into fights with their girlfriends. And I talked to, a, to, I talked to, I mentor a lot of uh, women basketball players, professional and on down. And I, one of the young ladies I was just talked to, Division One basketball player, she was like, Tony, these women be leaving men to go date women. And it be just as toxic with the women, sometimes even worse. And I was like, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm finding out. That's what I'm learning. So listen, this ain't gender based. This ain't gender based because I'm gonna tell you, I got aunties that will whoop a man behind. I got aunties that they gonna swing first, ask questions later. You hear me? My mama like that. My own mama like that. I'm trying to tell you. <clears throat> so it just depends on where you come from, how the, how the women cut, <clears throat> what they done seen, what they done been around, what they done had to live through. That's what you got to understand. <clears throat> Y'all forgive me. I'm up here talking. So listen to him. Understand it. Get this in your spirit. Get this all the way in your spirit. <clears throat> and this is a real thing now. This is a real thing. It's, it's, it's dangerous. It's real. And it is regular, meaning it's happening on the regular. This is happening. I, there was a statistic that came out a long time ago. Said it's happening every nine seconds a woman is being abused. Now, they're not keeping up with how many, you know, a man being abused because they really can't because men ain't calling. But it, imagine if every nine seconds a woman is being abused, but not every time do a woman call the police. So they really don't even know. It's, so really, it's every second a woman is being abused. Every second that this video has clicked, somewhere in this world, a woman has felt the fist of a man every single second. Because we got that many people and, and relationships get that toxic because we are not teaching love in school. And that's what they need to start to realize is they need to teach how to love. They need to teach they need to teach conflict resolution. They need to take teach de-escalation in the life skills class. That's what they need to be teaching. And they need to it need to be a class that you go through all year long. 
and you got to have this. I might have to sit down one day when I get enough money to where I can sit down and not have to work every day and write the curriculum and start getting it in all the private schools. Then I'm going to get it in the private colleges. And then I'm going to get it to the state colleges because this stuff need to be taught in school. And if you write curriculum, we uh, reach out to me. We might need to go to a cabin for seven, seven nights, eight days, and just knock that curriculum out from sun up to sun down. Bring us a chef in there, cook three meals a day, and um, knock this curriculum out. Then start getting it out here because we need to get, we need to learn how to relate, how to be in relationships. I mean, friendships is a relationship. Mother, father, relationship. Brother, sister, relationship. Mother, daughter, mother, son. One of the most tumultuous relationships is mother, daughter that I hear about the most. And you're supposed to be all love, but I have coached so many women who are at their wit's end with their mama. And it's probably because their mama was at their, her wit's end with her lackluster life or her lackluster marriage or her lackluster <clears throat> whatever it is and taking it out on her daughter and that's just sad it's just sad that and so if you a mom listen to this and you got a daughter get your life together right now get your life together right now because i guarantee you if you are a mom and you have a daughter right now you causing your daughter pain right now you causing your daughter trauma from your unhappiness from your trauma and you need to get your life together and because your daughter be the one that's going into a relationship and putting hands on a man because of her relationship with you. And then she putting hands on a man and then the man putting hands on her. And then next thing you know, this thing all out of all out of whack. Or she'll go into it and because you've been beaten up as a mom, then she go in there and she let a man be beaten up. Because the person who gave her birth beat her up verbally and emotionally and spiritually. So understand that too. And... I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, dads do this less. When you do the studies, dad inflict trauma less than a mom, but it's because a mom is bearing everything on her and she with the children the most. So a lot of children, their dad is the hero. And even sometimes when the dad wasn't even in the home, he get more credit. And it is unfair, but it's because the child had the ebbs and flows with the mama. And the daddy, they just got the gifts. They got the love. They got the hugs. You go to daddy's house, you get to eat candy. You do all these different things. So do the actual studies and you're going to see this when you start to look around in your own circle, your microcosm. A lot of times people going online and looking up statistics, look at your life. It is a microcosm of the world. So look at everybody you know. Like, I'm going to give you an example. I was listening to a guy album. His dad did not raise him in the home. And he made a song dedicated to the lessons his dad taught him. But there is not a song dedicated to the lessons his mom taught him or his grandmother taught him and he was closer to his mom and his grandmother than his dad. But the dad get the praise. And that right there just goes to show you what I mean by with this is this, when we see this domestic violence play out in adulthood, it's coming from childhood trauma. It's coming from a childhood example and experience or transaction or interaction and that's what we got to be mindful of if when we are parents we have to be mindful that we are not teaching how to abuse or how to be abused point blank period and the, there are no excuses for domestic violence there are explanations there are not excuses but you have to protect yourself and you protect yourself by knowing that there is always a possibility and you have to make sure the person you're dealing with has the tools in their tool belt to resolve the conflict within them and and not just resolve. And you got to know how to resolve the conflict within you so that y'all don't have as much conflict between each other. And that's what you have to realize and understand.
Now, hey, this Tony Gaskins, God bless you. Got to be real with you. Uh, don't know what I got coming up here soon. Oh, the writer's workshop coming up. Go to TonyGaskinsAcademy.com. God bless you. Talk soon.